Hi, Stacy Jones here on June 15th, 2011. I'm outside the Fringe Central Beer Tent, and I'm here with Michelle Lima of Bean. And you just had your preview. I unfortunately missed it <laughs> due to uh, another show going over by quite a bit. But um, how was your show? It was good. It was it was a learning experience. Um, I was really nervous, more terrified than I've ever been in my entire life doing anything. Um, and I kind of just had like a couple of seconds to get in there, throw down my tiny chair, which is my set, and um, and literally, I think I was in the dress room for maybe a minute, and then I just kind of walked on stage and started. So. Which That's is awesome. fringe. It's very fringe. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about what your show is about. Uh, my show, it my show started off about something else, and then I, as I started writing it, it became about um, something that I realized was important to me, but I didn't know it until I started writing about it. Um, which is trying to gain back um, how I felt as a child, where I felt that I could do anything and be anything, and how as a kid I was so fearless, and especially on stage as a kid, I would do anything and just jump right in. And then I kind of lost that as I started to grow up, and lately I've been really missing that, that part of my life, so I've been trying to gain that back. And the show is all about talking about me as a kid and those experiences and as I talk about them I realize that it's still inside me I'm still there I'm still a kid that's cool so have you have you ever done anything like this before a one-woman show no I've never um, I saw a one-woman show about a year ago and it really inspired me and I and I said oh I want to do that and but I never got around to writing anything until a few months ago at the open fist there were some extra slots um, to perform, so I raised my hand and, and said I had a solo show, even though it wasn't written yet. <laughs> and, then, and then I went about to writing it, which was uh, terrifying because I had a deadline. I, I knew that by June 13th I would be previewing, so um, so I just kind of jumped in. <laughs> so you got it together. You got yeah, it. You got I it did. going. It was very. Um, it's funny because I wrote like something. Um, like I said, I thought it was about something else. I was gonna. I was gonna make it about um, me wanting to be a superhero, because I also have like this weird obsession with being a superhero. <laughs> but then I realized that that was actually my my desire to like be a kid and have that like superhero quality about me. So so then I rewrote the script completely. Um, a few weeks ago, and um, so yeah, it was very, it was sort of like jump off the boat um, on the 13th because I had never said all the words together at once to anyone uh, before until the preview. So. That's great, that's great. Well, that's what Fringe is all about, so yeah. uh, when can okay. people come to see your show? Um, the next performance is June uh, 18th, the night of, at midnight, and then there's another midnight show the night of June 24th, which is a Friday. And then the final show is June 25th at 4 p.m., all at the Open Fist Theater. That's great. So I'm going to make that last yes. show for sure. <laughs> um, sorry I missed your first show, That's and right. I, I really hope that you have a great run, and I hope you Thank enjoy you. the rest of the Fringe Festival. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fringe opening night party is about to begin. It's about 8.45. I just ordered some food from Glowfish, our first food truck. Heard a lot of good stuff about them. I could not decide what I wanted, and these kind gentlemen were able to uh, help me out and suggest something for me. Beginning of the opening night party. It really is beginning. I'm here with Matt Quinn. Oh, hey. How hey. are you? He's the menu manager to of the Theater Asylum. Woohoo. He's very drinking. excited. There's already stuff happening on the stage. Yeah, very nice music, by the way. It's only like 15 after 9 right now. And there's all these people in here already. It's great. There's John Armstrong. Ezra, Pleasanton. Look, look at him all. Oh my God. He knows how to Go work see movies, man. baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ezra oh, Pleasanton, uh, the film programmer. Oh, I'm actually very sweet and nice, and I'm thrilled to death, and I love these people so much I can't even stand it, and I've lost my staff badge. Where'd it go? Very important, the lanyards. Oh, I love lanyards. Lanyards <laughs> define me. So how's the film program going, Ezra? I've been excited by many things in my life, and, and this is one thing that's excited me on a level that I've never been excited because it's, it's a uh, new area in programming films, but I don't know, I can't wait to see how, how the audience reacts. We had our tech today, and the techies and their friends who came to watch that were laughing and crying, and they were having a wonderful time, so I hope I didn't fuck it up. You did it, Ezra, you're awesome. Uh, I am what I am. <laughs> 
Stacy Jones here. I'm outside Fringe Central. The opening night party is in full swing, and I'm here with Alex Angelis, who is the star of Rock in Her Pocket at Theater Asylum. So tell me a little bit about what your show's about. Um, it's a dark comedy about Virginia Woolf. It kind of explores two um, lines with these characters. One's a student, a young girl, and one's Virginia Woolf. And it's about the sort of deconstruction of the last few days of her life between when she attempted suicide and when she commits it. So she's going crazy and hearing voices and talking to her printing press. And it's a, uh, it sounds dark, but it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> cool. So, um, what uh, is this the first time you've done a Fringe Festival or a one woman show or? Um, no, actually, I workshopped this show in New Orleans a couple of years ago at their Fringe Festival, cool. and that was really fun. It's changed a lot since then. I've also been at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival with my company, Not Man Apart. So I'm just really excited that it's in LA finally. I'm yay theater in LA. <laughs> That's great. So when can people come to see your show? Um, it's opening tomorrow, Thursday the 16th at 5:30, and it's at Theater Asylum. And also, it's very wonky times. Uh, the 19th, that's Sunday at 5:30. Uh, June 20th at 8:30, right. it's Monday. And 22nd, Wednesday at 7. <laughs> I have to memorize it. June, <laughs> June 26th at 1 p.m. is our closing on Sunday. Well, that's great. Uh, I hope I can get a chance to see it. It sounds so really too. cool. So I hope a lot of people come to your run and that you have a great Fringe Festival. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Look at Sarah Grace. Hello. Burlesque, burlesque, burlesque. She's got a beer in her hand. Yeah, I do. Let's see her or Pep. So first I'll take one love off, just to tease you girls and boys. Now, if you like the sound of that, well, make a little noise. I think that one went pretty well, so let's give this one a whirl. You know, to have you watch it just makes my toesies curl. So for Pinky,
guess I'm, I'm kind of hypocrite though. I mean, I'm not perfect. I have to admit that. Like sometimes, if no one's looking, I'll prove in the handicapped, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Stop! Yeah, parking spaces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll prove in those. I know I should. So uh, I, I took the highway to get here tonight to do this, and um, I saw one of those adopt a highway signs, and I thought, oh, that's sad, but it was a lot, got a lot more depressing as I thought about how often I see those signs. It's like, just once I want to see a highway raised by its loving biological parents. <laughs> Sometimes I sit in my car for a few minutes after I take the key out just to see what it does when it thinks I'm not there. I saw a werewolf at the bus stop this morning, or possibly just a really hairy guy. Either way, the silver bullets worked. <laughs> Woo! Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Also, don't go. There will be people shooting guns at each other there. the same 26 letters over and over again. It's outrageous. <laughs> yeah, books, how reading is important though. Reading is powerful. Reading can take you anywhere you want to go as long as you want to go exactly where you are. <laughs> if I was going to be stranded on a deserted island with any book, I'd want it to be a giant pop-up book about tents. <laughs>
towards bright lights. <laughs> instead of a landscape. <laughs> Thank you very much guys, that's my time.